Howdy and welcome back. I purposely began this application using server render views because I wanted to understand the limitations of rendering views server side versus the server delivering skeletal markup and relying upon the client to render those views or using a framework to provide the infrastructure for handling the model and the view. So these limitations are becoming really evident as I began to build out the real-time notifications of the sign-in process within our Activity Overlord application. So before going into how I kind of overcame those limitations with server-side views, I want to go over the stub app that I built that introduces the use of client-side view rendering via AJAX and jQuery to accomplish the same thing but with much less effort. So let's take a look at what I built. And you can see here I've got two different pages open and they represent two users hitting the same application. Kind of in a nutshell, this is like a, a guinea pig. The stub app is like a, a guinea pig that you had to dissect in biology class. And since I'm probably older than anyone watching this, I'll provide some context. You see, in the olden days, in order to better understand anatomy during biology class, we actually dissected an animal. Anyways, this app allows you to dissect some of the steps using WebSockets with sales. For example, I'm going to manually subscribe on both sides here, basically simulating two users subscribing to the user model. And by subscribing, now all changes, both create, delete, and updates to that model are going to trigger an event called message that we can listen for and change the DOM accordingly. For example, if I create a user here called Earl, both pages are going to be aware of that event and can act accordingly. I'm gonna go ahead and delete ID one. I'm gonna go ahead and create a, another user here. And now I'm gonna change that ID to a different name called Sam. So at each point, both on create, delete, and updates, our application is notifying any socket that is subscribed to the user model. Now for the really interesting part. We got all of this functionality in three lines of code. Four if you include the subscribe button. So where do we put these four lines of code to get this functionality? When you create a sales project, two files are generated that relate to WebSockets and Socket.io. The first is app.js and the second is sales.io.js. Let's go into app.js for a second. As it says in the comments, this file is designed to get you up and running with WebSockets quickly. You can change this file to your heart's content, and I'll be going over both app.js and sales.io.js in detail in another screencast. For this screencast, app.js provides the basics for setting up our WebSocket by connecting with the socket server and listening for a default socket message event. So that's what's going on here. Socket on, listening for message, and then doing something when it gets a message event. So if it gets this message event, these three lines of code, which consist of playing a sound and then displaying part of the message by appending to the page header div. So that's what's happening here. And then our alert fades out. And you can see here as part of the message, we get the ID of the user model that was affected along with the verb, in this case, create, update, or destroy. And that's basically it. If you go into this custom JS file, this is where all of our AJAX methods are. But how does a socket server know to let other sockets know of changes to the user model? That's where the other file, sales.io.js, comes in. Also optional, sales.io.js simulates a REST client on top of socket.io. This allows you to make a socket call like you do an HTTP call. For example, and let's go back to the custom.js file, and we'll look at this socket.get method. Socket.get slash user simulates a get user HTTP request, but it does something more. As long as we're using the REST blueprints, that is, this configuration of REST is set to true. When this socket.get request is made, it not only gets a list of users, but it also subscribes this socket, or the socket that's making the request, to a classroom that's listening to changes in that class, as well as any instances of that class. So for our user model, by making this request, 
we're subscribed to the user class and we're also subscribed to any instances of that user model. So by including these two files, app.js and sales.io.js, subscribing to the class model and then making AJAX calls on that model, we'll be made aware of any changes in real time. So I've set up a separate repo for this stub app, which I'll link to this video as well as the salescast log. And if you've got any questions, please send me a comment and I'll be happy to try to address it. So what happens if you've got to use a custom controller or in our case, the session or sign-in process doesn't have a model and yet we still want to get at real-time changes to those controllers? Well, that's what I'm going to address in the next screencast. I appreciate you watching.